This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. As always, we appreciate you joining us. On occasion, a national traveler wanders into studio. We're always happy to have them join us today. Karen Finney, senior advisor to Democratic presidential frontrunner Hillary Clinton, is here. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having for being me. here. Yes, and now you're the former host of Disrupt, so you have all kinds of TV <laughs> presence here. And uh, you're in town. You're in Arkansas to speak uh, to make a keynote address to the Democratic Black Caucus on mm -hmm. Saturday night. What mm -hmm. was your message to them? You know, my message was to talk about Hillary Clinton and why she's running for president, why Arkansas is important uh, in uh, her quest for the presidency, and also to talk about specific specifically about some of the key issues in this campaign, criminal justice reform being among those, how do we revitalize communities of color, certainly um, the economy and how do we, you know, Hillary would say we're standing, we've gotten to a point but we're not running, so how do we do that? How do we increase incomes and uh, address issues like income inequality? So just touching on some of the key issues of this campaign. And she's got friends here and you've got friends here, so this yeah. isn't unfamiliar territory no, for you. No, it's fun being, in, it's been fun being Little Rock. So a week does not go by that Hillary Clinton does not make headlines. That is what happens <laughs> when you're a presidential front runner. It tends to yes. happen to them. I want to run through a couple of sure. this past week here. I think we've got a graphic built for this. And so here's a few of them. Jeb Bush says, uh, I think on Friday, I will whoop Hillary Clinton, assuming that he is the Demo <laughs> or, uh, for GOP nominee. Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton extend leads in the U.S. 2016 race. Mm -hmm. And Hillary Clinton is still likable enough. I'm going to come back to that <laughs> one. So let's go to the first okay. two first about Jeb Bush and Donald Trump. Sure. Do you have a preference for which one of those candidates? And I want you to be honest with me because I know <laughs> it's really Donald Trump. So. <laughs> You know, honestly, whoever gets through the primary, I mean, quite, quite truthfully, whoever gets through the primary will be the hardest person to beat because they will have beaten that whole field of contenders. So, and I never like to make predictions because as you remember in 2008, nobody thought it was going to be John McCain and that that's where we ended up. So no one thought it was going to be Barack Obama. That's either. exactly right. You never, you never know what can happen. I mean, that is part of why I love politics. Um, but look, each of each of the Republican uh, candidates has, you know, different uh, pluses and minuses. But one of the things that we've actually talked a bit about is that they are in the same place on a lot of issues, frankly. And that's one of the things that we think it's important people know about. Um, you know, whether uh, Jeb is going to whoop anybody or what have you uh, the the tr one of the things we do know is that he wants to go back to trickle down economics and we know that doesn't work that's Donald Trump's view that's the view of uh, the other Republicans so to some degree uh, while they may say things in in different uh, gradations of language uh, policy wise they are very much in the same place on a lot of issues all right so let's go to the headline about Hillary Clinton is still likable enough mm -hmm. it was in quotes there mm -hmm. why does she struggle with this likability issue? Is that something that people keep conjuring up or do you think that she has trouble getting her personality out there? You know, here's the thing on that. You know, I'd like to say, I think Hillary Clinton is one of the most unknown known people uh, in our country. There's so much that people think they know about her that they don't know about her. And I think, you know, folks here in Arkansas know about the work that she did, for example, on education reform and what that meant for the state. Well, not everybody knows that. And so part of the job of this campaign, and that is part of the job of any campaign, is to to talk about your candidate, have the candidate also talk about what they want to do, but why they're doing it. Why are these issues important? And I think as we do that and as people have the opportunity to hear from her and talk with her, they know that uh, she's the one who's going to fight for their families and fight for them and that's what we're really focused on. I would argue that you don't have to be well liked to be a president either. We've not liked several <laughs> of our presidents and it that's seems like true. every time they get elected we like them less and less. Well, you so. know, I've, as we were talking about, you know, just before we came on the air, I mean, I worked in the 1992 campaign. I worked in the White House for uh, Secretary Clinton. I worked on her first Senate campaign. So clearly, I like her a lot, <laughs> and I think she would be a great president. All right. uh, so, well, you're getting paid to say that too. But I know you believe well, it. Well, I do believe it. Let's let's go to the events of this past week uh, in San Bernardino, uh, California. Another mass shooting. Your boss said, "I refuse to accept this as normal." She's called for more gun control, some more emphasis mm -hmm. on mental health issues and mm -hmm. awareness, touted her foreign policy and terrorism credentials. Mm -hmm. What do you think Hillary Clinton would advocate, what has she advocated 
that would have made a difference in this particular case? Well, I think it's hard to say only because we're still learning the details of what happened in, in this case, uh, and that's going to continue to unfold. But broadly, let's talk about a couple of things. And I'll give you actually one example uh, going to the shooting that we had in Charleston, the massacre there, uh, where a number of folks uh, in a church uh, during Bible study were gunned down viciously. You know, in that instance, the, the shooter was able to obtain a gun despite the fact there was a what she's called the Charleston loophole, which meant that even though there was a background check process in place, he was still able to uh, get his hands on a gun despite having had some issues in his background that would have certainly suggested he shouldn't have had a gun. That's one of the kinds of things she wants to take a look at, specifically around mental health issues. So uh, while we're learning the details of what happened in San Bernardino, her point, in, and look, here, here's the, the broader uh, point. You know, as you know I me, mean, she, First Lady of Arkansas, she, Senator from the state of New York, where we, you know, hunting, you know, Second Amendment rights, obviously very important. But I think what she would say is she refuses to, to to buy into the idea that it's either or. We can protect our Second Amendment rights, but we can also protect our children and our families and our streets. And I think part of what the reason that she said I refuse to accept this as as the as the new normal is, you know, depending upon how you count it up, there have been at least 21 mass shootings in this country this year. Now. It, that number goes higher, again, depending upon right. the number of casualties. That just can't be right. Yeah. And I think there is a real frustration, and I think particularly, and this is something, frankly, that she's been hearing about a lot on the campaign trail from parents in particular, and this cuts across racial lines and geographic lines. You know, people are concerned about what's going on in our country. We know that in some instances, uh, because people don't have access to mental health care services, uh, sometimes that may mean someone uh, who, could, who needs help uh, is in a and is in either criminalized and that that person ends up in, in prison or that person may be then more able to uh, put their hands on a, a firearm that they should not have and she's very clear to talk about we're talking about people who should not have guns we're not talking about law-abiding citizens you know sportsmen hunters that's not what we're talking about we're talking about people who would go to a, a center for the disabled um, we're talking to people who would gun down uh, people at it's Bible study. Right, sure. It's a complex debate. We could go on for another half hour about that, but I'm getting the wrap-up sign Okay, here. okay. Karen Finney, she's a senior advisor to Hillary Clinton. You come back anytime. You got it. Bring Hillary Clinton with you. Oh, sure. I'll see if she wanted to join me. Sure. All right, all right. I got you on record <laughs> on that one, though. So thank you so much for being here. Great to